whatever you believe, this is your reality. If you believe the world is an awful place, full of unfairness and evil things, this is your reality. If you believe the world is wonderful and full of beauty, this is your reality. If you believe that God is watching over you, this is your reality. If you believe the world's a dog-eat-dog place and everybody's out to get what they can, this is your reality. Your reality might be a heaven, it might be a hell. In this way, you can consider yourself to be a Siddha. You're somebody who shapes reality. It is the most incredible, supernormal power that you're manifesting from moment to moment. You're manifesting your own world, your own universe, by the force of your convictions. And you cling to these convictions. If you're told that there's no such thing as an external world, that there's no such thing as birth and death, and that there's no difference between the waking state and the dream state, you will react to all these statements with a sense of disbelief and outrage even, and reject them all forthright, such as your one-pointed concentration and investment in your own notions about the nature of yourself and the world. He who considers two things, like this world and heaven, to be real, obtains, obtains both these. These two things are your discriminations. We discriminate between real and imaginary, between life and death, between waking and dreaming, between me and the world, and so on. And this is our reality. This is what we obtain. Some Siddhas consider hell to be real too, and it appears to be real. That which is firmly believed to exist is experienced by that person physically, for the body is only mind. It's all notional. So it says belief here, and we might have a fairly tepid idea about what belief means. But it's the force of our essential convictions about the nature of the world. These are our beliefs. They're not just something that we happen to intellectually alight upon. Our whole reality, our whole sense of reality is invested in them. The jiva abandons a particular state when it leaves one body and then there itself entertains the notion of another state. It's like going from one dream to another. We go from one life to another, from one set of notions to another. If the notion is good, it experiences a good world, and if it is evil, it experiences an evil world. If it thinks of the world of the Siddhas, it experiences it. If its thoughts are impure, it experiences hell then and there. It's a strange thing, isn't it? Every night we dream. We have the potential of having an evening of bliss, a whole night filled with bliss. We can dream of miraculous and beautiful things. We could be soaring with the angels, but instead we might find ourselves on a toilet seat naked in the middle of the high street. <laughs> What's that about? Hmm? However, there are worse experiences than sitting naked on a toilet in the middle of the high street. In hell, the jiva experiences diverse sufferings and calamities, like being pierced by arrows, having the chest hammered by rocks, 
embracing a red-hot pillar, being burnt alive, eating each other's bodies in hunger, swimming in rivers of blood and pus. Feeling that evil action has led to this evil experience. And whatever we experience, if we start thinking about it, we think there's a reason for it. It's because of bad karma. It's a question to which extent we're attached to notions. We start constructing stories about how these experiences have come to be in terms of past karma. It's simply no more than our attachment to these notions. And we attach ourselves in the name of reality. We tell ourselves, but this is how the world actually is. The world is ever only how we believe it is, how we think it is. It is only ever how it is in accordance with the notions that we're adhering to.